remains in power, or does Saddam have to go before this mission can be successfully completed? Well, Mike, uh, there are three things. One is the emancipation of Kuwait. Second is the re restoration of law and order. Third is international legitimacy. Now, whether Saddam Hussein uh, remains or not, but I, I, this is not my concern. This is the Iraqi people concern. What we should emphasize is that in his presence, I will not uh, imagine unity. In his presence, I will not imagine harmony. In his presence, I will not uh, imagine prosperity or regional understanding. In his absence, we will have regional understanding. In his absence, we will have what we call harmony, relaxation, and emphasis on prosperity. Now, the, I'm not going to write the obituary of the regime. The Iraqi people should decide that. Let, me, let, let me ask you, when Kuwait is finally liberated, there's going to be a tremendous mess that the Allies and the Kuwaitis are going to encounter. How concerned are you about the difficulties of re-establishing a legitimate functioning government? Are you concerned about reprisals against, for example, Palestinians who stayed in Kuwait who may have collaborated with the Iraqis? Mike, I am totally against the what we call witch hunting. We will not tolerate it. Whoever collaborated with the Iraq should be subjected to the law of Kuwait. I will never accept really the chasing out of uh, Palestinians at random and indiscriminately. Second, you know, the Kuwaitis are very uh, people of expertise and I'm not worried about the speedy restoration of law and order and services. Third, we have expertise from the United States and from their life. And in collaboration with the Allies, we will be able to restore this country. Secretary General of the Gulf Cooperation Council, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Mike. I'm Mike Chinoy, CNN, reporting live from Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Thank you, Mike. When our live coverage continues, we'll have more and an update on the uh, war in the Gulf, plus a special assignment report on how the war may turn the PLO into a major casualty. In this morning's attack were U.S. Marines, Army Paratroopers, Army Air Assault Forces, and Army Special Forces. These forces, along with French and Arab forces, have already reached all of their first day objectives and are continuing their attack. Looking ahead to the end of the war, U.S. Defense Secretary Dick Cheney says the Allies have no interest in occupying Iraq, but he says he thinks Iraq will have a new leader after the war. I'm reluctant to predict what will happen inside Iraq. Uh, clearly, this is a man who has made some tremendous misjudgments. He has to have made uh, more significant misjudgments than any individual in modern times when you think about all of the mistakes he's made. He's put his country through uh, terrible travail. Uh, for absolutely no purpose whatsoever. I can't conceive of a situation in which a man like that would still be governing his country after those kinds of disasters. But um, who knows? I simply I, I can't claim to be an expert in Iraqi politics. Allied pilots returning from bombing missions say the entire country of Kuwait is covered by fire. They say it's so smoky they can't see the ground. U.S. military sources say Iraqi soldiers have torched more than 200 oil wells in Kuwait. Pilots say exploding bombs and shells are adding to the smoke and fire, and they're not encountering much resistance at all. A lot of friendly airplanes, that's probably our biggest uh, concern, is uh, not bumping into any friendlies. The Iraqis uh, aren't flying anything right now, and uh, we hope it stays that way, like it has been for uh, the majority of the war. Very few kills on our part, and uh, that's what air superiority is all about, keeping them on the ground or killing them when they fly. Britain's Royal Air Force is among the coalition forces pounding targets in Kuwait, and Mark Austin has more. As day breaks after the start of the ground war, RAF Jaguar jets take off for targets in Kuwait. There's no detail being released about exactly what their task is, but now the ground offensive has begun, they have a new role. Crucial support for Allied forces targeting troops, artillery and tank positions. 
There's no word on the success or otherwise of missions so far. I'm uh, very reluctant to say anything at the moment. Um, and the reasons for that are, are well understood, that uh, in the initial phases of any ground war, it is very, very important that nothing is revealed which could be of use to the enemy when so many uh, allied lives could be at risk. The Jaguar pilots left today having previously expressed confidence but also concern. What I'm not looking forward to is the uh, beginning of the ground offensive. I, I think they've um, husbanded, husbanded their kit and they'll be, uh, they'll be looking towards um, a fairly major anti-air offensive. They are well trained, they know how to use their weapons which is probably the worst side of it and also they've got plenty of defences out there. The tornado bombers are likely to continue their raids against airfields and supply routes, maintaining the attrition of Iraqi forces. On board the Jaguars, the lethal cluster bombs used against enemy tanks and infantry. When it goes off, it uh, punches a hole through whatever it hits, um, armor, a building, person. Doesn't sound very nice. No, it's a particularly vicious piece of equipment. Close to the airbase, two field hospitals, one American and one British. They contain the latest medical equipment and will be used to treat casualties evacuated from the front. The start of the ground war should reveal how successful the air campaign's been in recent weeks, just how effectively Allied airstrikes have worn down Iraqi troops to enable the ground offensive to proceed more smoothly. Mark Austin, ITN, with the RAF in the Gulf. And US battleships are joining the fray. The USS Missouri, just off the Kuwaiti coast, is lobbing one-ton shells with 16-inch guns. Allied forces moving into Kuwait will soon be followed by convoys bearing medical supplies. These supplies, now in a Saudi warehouse, are being loaded onto trucks for the journey north. A Saudi official says he also has reserves of rice, sugar, and milk ready for shipment. Baghdad Radio is reporting Iraqi President Saddam Hussein chaired a meeting of his top aides today. It gave no details. Baghdad Ready was also reporting the Allied assault against Iraq is failing. It carried an official war communique saying fighting has been heavy, but Allied forces have been beaten back. And it called on the Allies to provide proof about thousands of Iraqi prisoners, the amphibious landing on Kuwait, and the capture of Falaka Island. Baghdad Radio also carried a speech by Saddam Hussein today in which he said Iraqi forces have Allah on their side. They betrayed everybody. But God Almighty, Allah, is stronger than everyone, and he is the only one who is always watching, capable of everything, the Almighty. And he will put an end to their invasion, and will give them disgrace and frustration, and they will be defeated and vanquished, these treacherous betrayers. The Allies are apparently continuing their air attack on Baghdad. Air raid sirens sounded in the city earlier today. Shortly afterward, the Iranian news agency reported U.S. warplanes fired at least four rockets that hit the capital. Meanwhile, Baghdad's residents are going about their business. CNN's Peter Arnett says the capital indeed is as busy as it's ever been since the bombing began. Saddam Hussein is making some use of his military arsenal. Saudi television reports a Scud missile attack on Saudi Arabia. Two Scuds reportedly were destroyed by Patriot missiles and the debris fell into the desert. The Iraqi missiles were reportedly fired at an allied garrison in northern Saudi Arabia. Iraq launched a separate Scud attack on Saudi Arabia earlier today. The U.S. Central Command confirms one Scud was fired toward Riyadh, but it was intercepted by a Patriot defense missile and caused minor damage. As far as the war goes on the ground, though, very little Iraqi resistance. That's it from the update desk, Lynn. We'll keep you posted on details of the Gulf War as we know it. All right. Chanted calls for an end to the war. One demonstrator was arrested for making too much noise. He dropped to the ground and had to be dragged away by police. National Security Advisor Brent Scowcroft says President Bush is pleased with the ground war effort thus far. Scowcroft defends the decision to launch the land war rather than wait further for a diplomatic solution. He says Iraq was ravaging Kuwait. He has now set fire to over half of the, whole, of the oil wells in Kuwait. Uh, and we have indications that he is virtually practicing genocide in, in Kuwait City. Uh, another ecological disaster he's perpetrated. Uh, we've waited long enough.
The Soviet government indicates it thinks the U.S. should have waited longer before launching a ground attack. The White House says President Bush conferred with Soviet President Gorbachev before the assault began, but did not tell him when it would start. Foreign Ministry spokesman Vitaly Churkin says a peace plan could have been achieved in the United Nations Security Council within 24 to 48 hours. He adds it is still not too late to do so. Other allied governments say the ground campaign has their full support. Many say the coalition had no other choice but to press ahead with the land assault after reports Iraq was stepping up atrocities inside Kuwait. Countries from Japan to Germany laid the blame on Saddam Hussein for prolonging the war. British Prime Minister John Major says the battle will not end until Iraq is completely dislodged from Kuwait. I would like to add one final word to the families of those men who are engaged in this conflict in the Gulf. It will not, I believe, be a long conflict, but it may be a fierce one. There is no doubt in my mind that it is an absolutely justifiable conflict and that we will win it. As soon as that is confirmed, we will bring home the men who have been engaged in it at the earliest possible time. Britain's Queen Elizabeth asked her nation to unite in prayer for a swift Allied victory. In a broadcast address, she also praised the courage of Allied troops. Egyptian President Hosni Mubarak says he issued a last-minute appeal to Saddam Hussein to leave Kuwait and avoid the ground battle. He tells CNN he can never work with Hussein again. Jordan is expressing anger over the Allied land offensive and calling for an immediate ceasefire. As women and children protested outside the U.S. Embassy in Amman today, a government spokesman called the ground action illegal because Iraq had already accepted a Soviet peace plan to withdraw from Kuwait. Today's Jordanian statement asked God to protect what it called Iraq's heroic sons. Israeli officials say they hope the ground offensive will end the threat of Iraq's military, but there is still fear Iraq may yet use its chemical arsenal. Linda Scherzer reports. The Israeli government had little doubt that the war would inevitably come to this. The cabinet expressed full support for the ground war. There's a great deal of admiration in Israel for uh, President Bush's leadership and uh, total support uh, for the policy that's uh, been adopted. And wish the U.S. and its allies luck in defeating their enemy and Israel's. It is to lead to the complete military destruction of Iraq and that will have a good effect on the next stage, which is the search for political solutions. The government had watched with increasing frustration Iraqi scud attacks against Israel, agreeing to restraint for now, but promising retaliation later. But there is a sense now that the U.S. may just complete the job for Israel. The assessment here that uh, maybe by tomorrow uh, there will be no enemy. Confidence is so high that schools stayed open today, unlike at the start of the war. But students, as the rest of the population, are heeding warnings to carry their gas masks at all times. Last few days, we haven't brought them a lot of people, but today everybody brings them again. New fears on the street that Saddam may launch a suicide mission, a chemical attack. But even that hasn't diminished the confidence that, thanks to the U.S., Israel's own nightmare may soon be over. I feel they're doing the right job and the, go for it, as they say. Nearby, in Arab East Jerusalem, the mood was somber. Palestinians in the occupied territories were placed under another strict curfew. Their cities and towns closed military zones. The Arabs here are worried and angry. I am sad for this, what it happens. Really, nobody, they want the war. Every Muslim must go to Al Jihad to kill American and Israel and everybody who kill our Muslim people in Iraq. Palestinians are also warning the U.S. to be prepared for the consequences of its actions today. The American will be forced in the future to keep here something like half million soldiers just to keep the order. This is the first time the Israelis have sat on the sidelines watching a war that directly affects its own security. Normally, watching passively is not something the Israelis like to do. But this is one time when they are not restless. The Israelis believe the U.S. and its allies will do the job right. Linda Scherzer, CNN, Jerusalem. All over the Mideast.